بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله والسلام عليه أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر امور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد Alhamdulillah, we continue going over this tremendous book by the Imam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. The book which is entitled Shurut al Sala wa Arkaniha wa Wajibatiha. The conditions of the Sala and its pillars and its obligatory acts. We had reached the statement of the Imam Rahmatullah Alay where he gets into the obligatory aspects of the wudu. That which is obligatory and a يعني, uh, the obligatory acts of wudu. So he says, وَأَمَّا فُرُوضُ With regards to the obligatory acts of wudu, then, فَسِتَّ Then, there are six. The obligatory acts of wudu, then, they are, كم? They are six. ستة. And these are acts that if they are missing, if they are not present, then there is no wudu. No wudu, it will it will not count. It will not be there. He says, وَأَمَّا فُرُوضُهُ فَسِتَّ Those obligatory acts of the wudu, then they are six. غُسْلُ الْوَجْ The washing of the face. وَمِنْهُ مَغْمَضَ and what enters into the washing of the face is to make the madmada, to put the water inside of the, the mouth. وَإِسْتِنْشَاقُ إِسْتِنْشَاقُ is to put the water inside of the nose and then to, يعني, uh, يعني to put the water inside of the nose. But also what comes with that is the also the expelling of the water. وَحَدُّهُ and the Limits or the outline or that which is defined, yani of the face, what consists of the face, wahadduhu tulan min manabi tishat al raqs ila dhik ila ila dhikn ila dhikn. The outline of the face or what consists of the face, constitutes of the face, Lengthwise, then it will be from the hairline. It will be from the hairline 
all the way until the chin. From the hairline all the way until that which is considered the, the chin. وَعَرُضًا إِلَى فُرُوعِ الْأُذُنَيْنِ And withwise, it will be until the edges of the ears. And inshallah ta'ala will come more to what is intended by the edges of the ears. وَغُسُّ الْيَدَيْنِ إِلَى الْمِرْفَقَيْنِ And the washing of the hands until the elbows. Until the elbows. And inshallah ta'ala, we will come to know what is intended by ila here until what is meant by ila here, yani until the elbows. Wa mash jami'ir ra's and wiping of the whole head. Wiping of the whole head. Wa minhu al udhunain and from it, meaning from the head, then it is the the two ears. Wa ghusu rajlain il al ka'bain. And the washing of the two feet until the ankles. The washing of the two feet until the ankles. Yeah, meaning with the ankles. Just like in al mirfaqin until the elbows, meaning including the elbows. And inshallah ta'ala, we'll come to each part, we will expound bihnilahi ta'ala. Wa tartib wal muwana. And it also have to be in order. And it has to be in consistency. It has to be in order and it has to be consistent. It can't be discontinued uh, to the point where one of the body limbs, it dries before you move on to the next part. What Daniel and the proof of this, قوله تعالى, is the statement of the Most High. يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا قمتم إلى الصلاة فاغصلوا وجوهكم وأيديكم إلى المرافق. وَمْسَحُوا بِرُؤُوسِكُمْ وَأَرُجُلَكُمْ إِلَى الْكَعْبَيْنِ That all you, uh, Allah Ta'ala statement what it means, all you who believe, when you stand for the prayer, then wash the face and the hands slash arms until or including the elbows and wipe over the head and wipe over uh, the head and wash the feet. Wipe over the head and wash the feet. وَأَرْجُلَكُمْ نعم. And in this recitation, or when it is, يعني, it comes وَأَرْجُلَكُمْ نعم. Then it means to wash the feet. To wash the feet. نعم. To wash the feet. طيب. فَغْصِنُوا وَجُوهَكُمْ Wash your faces. وَأَيْدِي يَاكُمْ And your hand slash arm until the elbows. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَمْسَحُوا وَمْسَحُوا بِرُؤُسِكُمْ And wipe your heads. بِرُؤُسِ نعم. And wipe your heads. طيب. There comes a recitation where it says, وَأَرُجُوا لِكُمْ وَأَرُجُوا لِكُمْ نعم. Inside of this recitation, the feet here will go back to بِرْؤُسِكُمْ نعم. Meaning the مَسْحْ And to wipe your heads and your feet. نعم. When there's a kasra on the lamb in أَرُجُوا لِكُمْ Huh? And arujul, in this one, arujul likum, then what is understood, and wash, and, excuse me, and wipe your feet. So wipe over your heads and your feet. And this here is a delil, which shows the legislation of making mesh, wiping over the socks, wiping over the socks, naam. And then in the, uh, well-known recitation, as it comes on house, the one of recitation of house, naam. Uh, it comes, وَأَرُجُوا لَكُمْ وَأَرُجُوا لَكُمْ And what is understood when there is a fatha on the lamb, then this means, and wash your feet, إِلَى الْكَعْبَيْنِ Including the ankles. And wash your feet, including the ankles. عَلَى كُلِّ حَالِ When we look at it, this ayah here from Surah Al-Ma'idah, 
and it's verse number six from Surah Al Maida. Then we see the legislation of both washing the feet and wiping over the feet. Naam, of washing the feet and also wiping over the feet when making uh, wudu. When making wudu. With Dalil al Tarutib and the proof which points to the Tarutib that it has to be in order. Naam. Is the hadith, hadith. Ibda'u bima bada Allah bihi. Begin with that which Allah has begun with. With dalilu mawala and or mawala and the proof and evidence for it has to be a continuation, it can't be discontinued. Is the hadith sahibul lum'ah. Is the hadith of the one who had a spot of untouched, dry skin. Now, it was a spot of, uh, for lack of a better term, how we would say, like ashy skin, which was an indication that that part had not been touched with water. That that part had not been touched with water. And in, and in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as it comes, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, أنه لما رأى رجلا في قدمه لمعة قدر الدرهم لم يصبها الماء فأمره بالإعادة is that when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he saw a man who had in his foot a, a spot that was the size of a dirham it was the size of a dirham of which no water had touched it the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded the man to make his whole wudu again to repeat the wudu, to make another wudu, make wudu again. Now, because of this spot that was missed, uh, that water had not touched it. So this is a hadith, this is a dalil, this hadith, that it has to be a consistency and water must touch every limb, uh, to the point where, uh, if a body part had dried before the next body part was fully touched by water, then this would be a discontinuation of the wudu, and he will have to start his wudu all over again. Naam, he will have to start his wudu all over again. But, so now I'm going back, because inshallah ta'ala will take uh, one by one, and uh, that was all of them, but we'll take inshallah ta'ala one by one. The Imam rahmatullah alayhi, he begins by saying, uh, the, the, the washing of the face, wa minhu madmadah, and from it is the madmada to put the water inside of the mouth and al istinshaq which is to take the water inside of the nose. Hada madhabu Imam Ahmed. This is the madhab of Imam Ahmed, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Al Madmada wal istinshaq da khilaini fil ghusl waj. That madmada and istinshaq taking water inside of the mouth and putting it and taking it and sniffing up the uh, inside of the nose then this is from the madhab of Imam Ahmed rahimahullahu ta'ala naam that it enters and it is inclusive or it, it and it is included with the washing of the face it is included with the washing of the face a yajibu ala al mutawaddi an yatamadda wa yaslam shaqwa naam wa yastam that the one who makes the wudu, he has to put the water inside of his mouth. And he has to sniff some water inside of his nose. And he has to expel it. And he has to expel it from where, from, from his, uh, from his nose. Now, so he put the water inside the mouth, he spit the water out, he put, uh, and in that same handful, because with three handfuls, the Prophet said him, he would put the water inside of his mouth and sniff up, uh, with, yeah, like one handful in the mouth and sniff one handful, then he would expel the water and he will, and he, uh, from his mouth, and then he will expel it from his nostrils. Naam. And the Prophet Sallallahu he would do that, uh, two, uh, three times. He would do that three times. And this was, yani, the, uh, the, the majority of the, of the time. Naam. Uh, the Shaykh, he says, وَيَسْبِقُ ذَلِكَ غُسْلُ كَفَّيْنِ مرات. And before, before reaching this point of putting, uh, putting the water in the mouth, and sniffing it in the nose and then expelling, uh, then this was preceded by washing the hands three times. This was preceded by washing the hands 
three times. وَهَذِهِ وَهَذِهِ مَنْ مَسَائِلْ أَلَّتِي بَيَّنَتْهَ السُنَّةِ كَمَا سَيَأْتِي And these are issues that the sunnah it has explained as will come. These are, these are issues, now exactly the kafiyah of the wudu, how we make the wudu, then this has been explained inside of the sunnah uh, of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as they will come bithni lahi ta'ala. وَجَاءَ مُجْمَلًا فِي الْقُرْآنِ وَبَيَّنَتْهُ السُنَّةِ They come generally inside of the Qur'an. They come in a general manner inside of the Qur'an and they are further explained inside of the sunnah. They are further explained inside of the sunnah. And this is a clear indication here and another example how uh, a sunnah here to fasil al-Qur'an. That the sunnah, it is that which explains the Qur'an. That the sunnah, it is that which explains the Qur'an. Naam. So an individual, if he wants to make wudu, the way in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he made the wudu, then he has to refer back to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Naam. So this, so, so the, the kafiyah, and the details of it, it come inside of the, the sunnah, the manner in which a person, he makes the wudu, the details of it have come inside of the, the sunnah. Naam. Whereas in the Quran, the near mention is a, is a, is a general mention. Wahaddu. And what is the outlines of the face? Or how the face is defined? So we know, okay, well, what enters into the face? What enters into the face? Wahaddu tulan. And the definition of the face as it comes with lengthwise, what are its borders from length to length? Naam, top to bottom, bottom to top. The Shaykh he mentions, uh, for little Shaykh, Al-Alama Muhammad Aman al-Jami, Rahmatullah alayhi, he says, Wahadduhu, Wahaddu al-Waj, Tulan, Min, Manabit al-Sha'r, al-Ra'ts, Manabit al-Sha'r, al-Ra'ts, Ilal-Dhiqan, it is from the hairline, all the way into the chin. وَالذِّقْن دَاخِلٌ فِي الْوَجْهِ It's a very important point, is that the chin, it enters into the face. The chin, it enters into the face. الذِّقْن الْمُلْتَقَى الْلَحْيَيْنِ That, what is the ذِقْن? It is that portion, that, that bone, نعم, that is at the two uh, bones, yani the, 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 the two jaw lines. Naam. Because Al-Lahyu, Al-Lahyu, Naam, so we understand what is Al-Lahyu, Al-Lahyu, in the Arabic language, and it's spelled Alif, Lam, Lam, Ha, Ha, Naam, not, not a soft Ha, but a hard Ha, Ha, and then a Ya, Al-Lahyu, Al-Lahyu, Naam, Al-Lahyu, Al-Azamayn, or Al-Azam, Al-Azaman, Al-Azaman, Al-Ladhani, Fihima, Al-Asnan, Al-Azaman, Al-Ladhani, Fihima, Al-Asnan. Then these will be the, the two, um, Bones, uh, the two jaw bones that have in it teeth. The two bones, those two bones that have inside of it teeth. Or you can say hanak. Naam. Or you can say fak. Naam. Because you have, yani, and hanak al a'la, the high jaw bone, that which has, which houses the top teeth. And then you have, yani, al fak al asfal, أو سفلي and you have that uh, bottom portion mandible that bottom portion or the mandible that has the that houses the bottom row of teeth نعم this the, these يعني is 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 the لحيين نعم these two bones the knees are the لحيين so you find that the uh, the ذقن the ذقن نعم what that is, it is الجوز البارز في الأسفل الوجه تحت الفم. This is that bone which is pronounced. That bone which is pronounced 
on the bottom of the face, under the mouth. That bone which is pronounced at the bottom of the face, under the mouth. Meaning what? Your chin. Your chin. Nam. So, the definition or the borders of the face lengthwise, then it will be from the hairline to the chin, to the chin. وَعَلَىٰ عَلَىٰ الْأَحْيَيْنِ مَعَىٰ الْذِقْنِ تُسَمَّىٰ لِحْيَىٰ And the jaw bones, the mandible, نعم, the jaw bones, along with the chin, all of this is what is called الْحْيَىٰ نعم, الْحْيَىٰ شعر الخدين والذقن and the لحية the beard then this is the hair that is on the cheeks and that is on the chin this is the hair that is on the cheeks and that is on the chin uh, and inshallah we're going to come back to that point in, uh, in briefly uh, in a little bit inshallah ta'ala وَالذِقْنُ دَاخِنُ بِالْوَجْ And the chin enters into that which is the face. إِلَى الذِقْن أَيْ مَعَ ذِقْن إِلَى الذِقْن أَيْ مَعَ ذِقْن When it says until the chin, what is means by until here, means along with. So إِلَى الذِقْن Until the chin, it doesn't mean that we stop right at the chin and that we don't have to wash the chin. But what it means is مَعَ So إِلَى here comes with the meaning of ma'a. So again, ila, ila here means ma'a. Ila here means ma'a. So it means that we wash the chin as well. The chin enters into it. Naam. Wa'arudan. And what it is from, yani, uh, Withwise, then it will be from ear to ear. Naam, from the, from the edges of each ear. Bayin. Shaykh, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, in explaining that the lihya, what is the lihya, and it's a very important point, is that it is the hair that is on the cheeks and the chin. It is not just the hair that is on the mandible. And this was a doubt that um, some of the deviant individuals and some individuals from the kuffar, the likes of Dr. Malachi York, Nam, who was a kafir, they used to say that the lihya because the lihya is called the lihya in the, in the Arabic language because it is the hair that is predominantly along the, uh, that, uh, that mandible, right? It is the hair that is along that, that mandible, right? So this is why it has, the, has been called, uh, lihya. This is why it's been called lihya. Naam, because it's the hair that is on the lihyain. It is the hair that is on these two bones, and the mandible. So this kafir, what he said was, therefore the lihya, it is only the hair that is on these bones to the exclusion of uh, the other hair. So and this is why you will find that those individuals who was a part of that Ansar cult back when, what they do now, Allahu A'lam, but before, they used to grow their beards, and they will taper it so that it straddled only the mandible. So they would they would they would trim it up so that it came only on the mandible. This is why they will have their their hair like this. Now this is why they will have their their beards like this. But this is not correct, and this is not the meaning of what a beard is in the Sharia. The beard is that hair that is on the individual's face, from the hair that is on his chin to the hair that straddles the mandible. And that hair that is upon his cheeks, all of that is the lihya. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi told us, what liha, and leave alone your beards. Now leave alone your beards. 
So therefore, we're not allowed to shave any of any of this hair. Now, even to edge it up and to trim it, this is not permissible in the deen of Islam, and this is not a manly characteristic. Ala kulli hal, the Sheikh, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions, he says, he brings a question, because it says, until the ears. Naam. So, like he mentioned, until the chin, it meant what? That the chin also enters into it. Until meaning ma, ma. So the question here now becomes, where is, when it says until the tips of the ears, right? Does this mean, does this mean including the ears? That the ears also enter into it? Where it says, إِلَى فُرُوعِ إِلَى فُرُوعِ إِلَى until the tips of the ears. So does this mean now that the tips of the ears or the the borders of the ears also enter into the face? Naam. Does it enter into the face or is it a part of another body part? So the Shaykh he asks, Hal al min al amla are the ears considered from the face or not? He says, that here there is a difference of opinion amongst the people of knowledge. Here there's a difference of opinion amongst the people of knowledge. وَيَرَى إِمَامْ أَحْمَدْ أَنَّ الْأُذُنَيْنْ مِنَ الرَّأْسِ But Imam Ahmed, he considered that the ears, then they were from the head. And if you find, يعني Imam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab, يعني whose book we are studying from, the Imam Rahmatullah Alay, when it came to his fiqh, and, yani his usul, usul al fiqh, and so on and so forth, and qawa'il al fiqhiyyah, then he was upon the madhab of Imam Ahmed. He was upon the madhab of Imam Ahmed. Naam. But this is not to say that the Imam, meaning Imam Muhammad Abdul Wahhab, he was one who was a staunch blind follower of the Hanbali madhab. But rather, the Imam Rahmatullah Alay, he used to place his concern upon the Adilla. He used to place his concern upon following the Adilla, the proofs and the evidences. So much so that it has been reported as the Fadil to Shaykh, Shaykh Sulaiman al Ruhaili, Hamidullahu Ta'ala, he mentions that one time Imam Ahmed, uh, excuse me, that one time Imam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab, one time, Imam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab, he was asked, what is any qawm al-rajih fi madhab? Yani fi al-mas'ala, yani suya an al-mas'ala. He was asked about an issue. So the person asked, well, ma huwa qawm al-rajih fi al-madhab? What is the strongest opinion inside of the madhab? Imam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab, he disapproved of that question. He disapproved of that question. He said, do not ask what is the strongest opinion in the madhab but rather ask, what is the strongest opinion? Don't ask, ما هو القول الراجح في المذهب? بل قول ما هو القول الراجح? He said, but ask, what is the strongest opinion? Don't ask, what's the strongest opinion in the madhab? No. Ask, what is the strongest opinion? You understand? Because the madhab is not a goal within, within itself, but the goal is what? Is to be in compliance to the book and the sunnah. To be compliance to the book and the sunnah. And the way that we are compliant to the book in the Sunnah is by following of the proofs and the evidences. By following of the proofs and the evidences. The madhab, it is that which helps you uh, along your studies and so on and so forth and gives you direction. But it's not the goal in itself, but it's a tool. It's a tool that is used to help you into being compliant with the book and the Sunnah. Naam. Ala kulli hal. We're saying this to say that when one looks at how Imam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab he worded uh, this uh, this very uh, tremendous book. We will see that understanding. We will see that understanding. Naam. When he, he mentions that it's um, it's 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 with the the width of the face is from the tips 
of the ear, where the ear starts to begin, uh, to where the ear starts to begin, right? And it does not include, it does not include what, or is not inclusive in the face itself, that the ears are not a part of the face. As Imam Ahmed, as Imam Ahmed, Rahimahullah um, Ta'ala, he viewed that the ears, they were from the head, and they were not from the face. That the ears, they were from the head, and they were not from the face. Bidalil, and his proof was, Anna, man yamsah ra'sahu, yamsah udhunay ma'a ra's. He said, because the one who, when he wipes over his head, when he wipes over his head, he also, in that motion of wiping over his head, what does he also wipe? He wipes his ears. He wipes his ears. وَلَا يَأْخُذْ مَاءً جَدِيدًا And he does not take new water. He wipes his ears and he does not take new water. Naam. If we go back to the ayah, Allah Ta'ala tells us to wipe what? Our heads. وَمْزَحُوا بِرُؤُوسِكُمْ Wipe your head. Naam. Allah Ta'ala tells us, wipe your head. And therefore, what? What is also wiped is what? The ears. The ears. The ears are also wiped so they, they enter into the head. Whereas the face, Allah Ta'ala in the ayah, what does he say? He says, فَغُسِّلُوا وُجُوهَكُمْ And wash your faces. Wash your faces. So Allah Ta'ala commands us to do what? To wash our faces. Whereas our head, we wipe our head. So being that the ears, they are wiped and they're not washed, then this is an indication that the ears are from the head and they're not from the face. Al-Alama Muhammad Amana Jami, he says, وَعَلَى كُلِّنْ He says, in any event, دُخُولَ الْعُذُنَيْ فِي الْوَجْهِ مَحِلُ الْخِلَافِ Entering the ears inside of the face, and this is a point of differing amongst the scholars. وَعَلَى قَوْلْ أَنَّهُمَا خَارِجَتَانِ عَنِ الْوَجْهِ he said, and then you have the statement that they are outside of the face. يَقُولُ مَعْنَا قَوْلُهُ Then the meaning of his statement, إِلَى الْفُرُوعَ الْأُذُنَيْنِ Until the tips or the borders of the ear, إِلَى عَلَى بَابِهَا Meaning, until right you reach, until before the ear. Meaning, until the ear. Not including the ear, but until the ear. نعم. وَلَيْسَتْ بِمَعْنَا and it doesn't mean along with the tips of the ear or along with the borders of the ear. It means until, right before you hit that border, then that, then the face ends. But do not enter, uh, the, uh, the ear in, into the face. Many don't watch the ear into the face. Naam. Because the ears, they don't enter into the, uh, face. The ears, they do not enter into the, Face. And this is different than the ila as it comes in ghusl yadain. The washing of the hands, which is the next, the next part. Al ghusl yadain ila al marfaqain. Washing of the hands until, meaning including the elbow, including the elbow. Naam. A ma'a mirfaqain. A ma'a Mirfaqin, meaning that we have to wash the, uh, the hands or the arms, including the elbow. Including the elbow. Ila huna bima'na ma'a. Because ila here, it means along with. Along with. Well, mirfaq, yughsal. And the elbow should be washed. The elbow, it should be washed. So we shouldn't stop prior to the elbow, but in making the wudu, the elbow, it should be washed. Bel, rather, Yejibu. But it is also, yani, uh, wajib. It's also wajib as what? Al ghusl. Al awad. That all, not just we wash the elbow, but we should come over the elbow and begin, yani, even wash the lower part of the upper arm. The lower part of the upper arm. So that means past the elbow. And then we will go so we wash a little bit of the tricep and the bicep, yeah? 
or a little bit of the, uh, what's the one in the back? The tricep. Now, to make sure that we got what? That we got the full elbow. Now, and if you, and if you brought it around to the front, then it will be the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the little part or the, the very bottom of the bicep. So that all of that also should be washed. And the, and the, uh, and the sheikh, he mentions, he says, so that we are certain that we have washed the elbow in totality. So that we are certain that we have washed the elbow in totality. Now, so in order to wash the elbow in totality, then we should go above the elbow, huh? Washing the very bottom also of the upper arm. So that will be the very bottom of the, of the tricep and the very bottom of the, of what, uh, uh, yeah, if you to, you know, uh, bring that water all the way around, it also will be a little bit of the bicep. Now, be a little bit of the bicep. So we shall wash also the upper part, the lower portion of the upper, of the upper arm. Now, and the Sheikh, he mentions, he says, ما لا يتم الواجب إلا به فهو واجب. He says, so that which an obligation is not completed except by way of it, then it is also an obligation. That which an obligation is not completed except by way of it, then it's also an obligation. And this principle is a very important principle, and 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 and, and, and it covers many many different topics. But this was one of the um uh, the points that Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he mentioned um, when he was explaining that learning of the Arabic language is wajib. That is wajib to learn the Arabic language. And the manner in which he came at it was that understanding the religion is wajib. For us to have uh, fahm of the religion, to understand, understanding of the religion, then this is wajib, right? And one will not be able to have understanding of the religion without understanding Good, the Arabic language. That, I mean, and, and I mean true understanding of the religion. Now, true understanding of the religion. Those individuals who say that, oh, so and so has understanding of the religion and they don't know Arabic and uh, as if this is, uh, is what's the name? This, this is not something that is real. I, I, as the young folks say, this is not a thing. You understand? An individual, if he or she wants to have any fiqh in the religion, then you have to learn the Arabic language. This is not to say you can't learn something about the religion by way of translation, but know that your knowledge will always be deficient. Your knowledge will always be deficient from many standpoints. From one standpoint is that things are lost in translation. Now, this things are lost in translation. That's clear. We, 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 we all understand that. Now, the Arabic language is richer than uh, many cases what can be expressed in other languages. So things are going to be lost in translation. There are going to be certain aspects that are not translated uh, in order to make it uh, listener friendly or reader friendly. So you have this aspect. So things are going to be missing. Now, when it comes to the intricacies and and and, and yani of uh, of of, um, of, uh, of 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 the word construction and grammar and so on and so forth, this will be missing on on the audience who 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 is not privy to that knowledge and who doesn't know Arabic language. They will not be able to benefit from these intricacies. For example, what we went over in the ayah. The difference between arujulakum wa arujulikum. Now, that's something that a person who is reading the translation will never be able to get a pick up on that on, on that benefit because these things and are not easily translated into the Arab into the English language. Excuse me, they're not easily translated into the English language in a manner that is understandable. Now, because there are other background uh, knowledge and things that have that go along with it that require explanation. So this is another standpoint. Another standpoint why an individual his knowledge will always be lacking is that what is that his source materials are always going to be deficient. And the reality of it is is that no matter how much has been translated into the English language, everything is not going to be translated into the English language. No matter how much has been translated into the English language, everything is not going to be translated into the English language. And you'll find that much of what is translated into the English language outside of the books of Hadith, Naam, are books that are small, are small books. Not massive, voluminous books. A person that asks, is, is Majmur al Fatawa Sheikh Khul Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, is it translated? No, it's not. You know how many volumes that book is? Not translated. What about Fatah Bari? Yeah? Explanation of Al Bukhari? No. Do you know how many volumes that book is? That book is not translated. Yeah? It may take an individual a lifetime, a team of individuals, a lifetime 
and 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 and, and, and it's still going to come up deficient. It's still going to yeah, uh, miss out. You're not going to get from it like what you would get if you had a good understanding of the Arabic uh, language and the and 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 the principles of uh, the Sharia, the principles of the Sharia. Naam. Ala kulli hal. These are just some uh, points to show. That no matter what's been translated and what we read inside the English language is always going to be deficient. So I always encourage uh, myself and I encourage my brothers and my sisters to uh, cut out the middleman. Cut the middleman out. Who's the middleman? The translator. Now I'm cut him out. Cut out the middleman. Learn Arabic for yourself. This way you can listen to the ulama directly. And when you have questions, you can ask them directly. And if you have yani yeah. And so on and so forth. When you want to check your understanding, then you can check your understanding what? Directly. Because you'll be able to speak to them in their language. Now, you'll be able to understand the Kitab and the Sunnah, uh, uh, in, 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 in Lugha al-Arabiya, in the Arabic language. I know that was a little off point, but this is a very important point that, uh, I wanted to, I wanted to stress and I wanted to, to mention. So the, so the, so the, so the Sheikh, he says, That which an obligation is not completed except by way of it, then it is also wajib. And he's using that to say that what? That washing the lower parts of the upper arm is wajib. Why? Because you won't be able to fully wash the elbow without washing the up the, the lower portion of the upper arm. Now, so because washing the elbow is wajib, then you have to wash the lower part of the upper arm because you will not be able to fully wash the elbow without washing the lower portion of the upper arm. So therefore, it's wajib to do so. Because the elbows, then they are from the hand when it comes to making the wudu, or they are from the arm. And this is another point where we'll see uh, where the English language, it gets really choppy. Uh, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, uh, And your A.D. Naam, your A.D. In your A.D.akum ila al-marafiq. And to wash your hand slash arms until the elbow. Meaning, including the elbow. Including the elbow. Naam. لَأَنَّ الْمَرْفَقَيْنِ مِنَ الْيَدْ فِي الْبَابِ الْوُضُوءِ وَالْيَدْ لَهَا مَعَانِ Because the elbows are from what's called a yad in wudu. And the word yad has different meanings. The word yad has different meanings. Naam. A lot of times when we see yet, we understand from a hand, as we say hand in 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 uh, in, in English. Naam. But as the Sheikh he mentions, he says el yet tuplak ala kafein. That the that the word yet is being used to describe what's called kafein. The kef the kef is the hand part, the palm, right? The light side and the, and, the, and the dark side, whatever. Huh? This is the uh, yet. Sometimes yet comes, and this is what it's referring to, or what's called the uh, the hand, right? Well, tutlaq ala the ra'in, and also the word yet comes, and it means what? The arm, the arm, right? The arm. So when we look at this here in this ayah, when we see that, then we uh, then we know that it means more. Than just the hand, the palm of the hand, right? Because it says until the elbow, and as we know, there, there, there there's some parts between the palm, right, of the hand, and between the elbow. So it says the yani the hand until the elbow. So we understand it's not yani uh, uh, restricted to just the the palm. So sometimes in the Arabic language, the word yet refers to the two arms. Nam, but to look ala and yet. Uh, and sometimes it means the uh, okay. Let me do this again and and again and and I apologize. This is where the English language gets choppy. Sometimes the word yet it comes and it means the hand, what we call hand in English, right? And then sometimes the word yet it comes and it means arm, what we'll call arm in English, because in English when we say arm we don't include the hand. 
Huh? The arm will be from what? The wrist up is what we'll say arm. Right? If you say somebody got his hand cut off, that means he got that, that part right there cut off. If he said, oh, we got his arm cut off, you don't mean he got his hand cut off. You mean the whole arm, man. He, he's gone, right? But, so sometimes in the Arabic language, it, the, the word yet, it comes and it means the arm, what we will call the arm. And sometimes in the Arabic language, when the word yet comes, it means everything from the tips of the fingers all the way up into the armpit. The tip of the fingers all the way up into the, the armpit. So when you say yet, then it will mean, it will include the hand and the arm, the lower portion and the top portion all the way up into the armpit. All up into the armpit. So the whole limb. The whole limb sometimes is referred to in the Arabic language as yed, as yed, ma'am. And the manner and what and how you will know, because a person may come and say, well, then how will we know what is being referred to? And that is as Shir uh, Uthameen, rahmatullah alayhi, he mentions that in the Arabic language, words standing alone by themselves don't carry any specific meanings. Why? Because you have words like this that have various meanings Depending, depending on what? Depending upon the content. And this is what the Shaykh he mentions, that once you put it inside of a context, once you put it in a context, now, then from the context, we know what you're talking about. Then from the context, we know what you're talking about. Now, just to give you a quick example, it's like the word Ain, and this is what the Shaykh he mentions. The word Ain in the Arabic language has many meanings. You have an Ain, and uh yani uh yura that 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 yani uh you, you see with it uh, you see with it yani yura bi you see with it or yura biha you see with it naam and then you have an ayn yani yushrab minha an ayn that is drinking from that is drunk from naam then you have an ayn that gives information but so the word ayn in the arabic language could mean i it could mean spring and it could mean spy the only way that we know what you mean by Ain, whether it's an eyeball, it's a spring of water, or it's a spy, is when you put it in the context. So if I said, Ra'aytuhu bi'aini, I seen him with my eye, then you know in this case, because of the context, you know I'm speaking about the eye in my head. But if I said, Yani shirabtu min aynin, I drink from the Ain, then you know I'm not talking about the eyeball, and you know I'm not talking about a spy, I'm talking about a spring of water. That's the only thing to mean, right? Or if you said, وَجَدْتُ فِي مَسْجِدِنَا عَيْنًا Or if you said, I found inside of our masjid an ayn. Then, we, then no one's going to think, oh, he found a spring of water inside the, inside the masjid. And no one's going to think, oh, he found an eyeball inside the masjid. You're going to understand, he's talking about a spy. It's a spy. Now, so this is just an example of the richness of the Arabic language. That once the word is put inside of a context, then we know what it means. So likewise, how do we know the difference between yed, yani meaning just the hand, and yed meaning yani the you know uh, uh, the arm, or yed meaning the whole the hand and the arm together all the way up into the armpit? How do we know the difference? We will know that based on the context. We will know that based on the context. Once it is put inside of a context, then we'll know what is what 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 yed mean here in this context. But yeah. so with that being the case, uh. Uh, the Sheikh he mentions uh, yani, uh, this particular point so that we have some some further understanding of what is meant by yet. What I can yet huna ma'a mirfaqin. He said, but the yet here it means the yet uh, including what uh, including up until the the elbows. Naam, up until the elbows. So when we say we have to wash our arms, and this is why when we go to uh, to wash our arms in the wudu. Right? Granted, we start by washing our hands, right? Start washing our hands. But when we come to washing our arms, we don't start from the wrist. We don't start from the wrist. Because yet here, it would mean from what? The tips of the fingers all the way up until what? Until the elbow. All the way up until and including the elbow. This is what is meant by washing of the arms. So you tell somebody, okay, well, do we wash our arms? They may think, okay, the arm, wash the whole arm, including the top of the arm, the shoulder, all that. No, 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 it doesn't mean all that. It means from the tip of the fingers all the way up, including the elbow, and what, as the Sheikh mentions, and to wash the lower portion of the uh, upper arm, 
so as to ensure that the elbows were washed. So to ensure that the elbows, uh, they were washed. And this was intended by Yed here in this context. Next, the Sheikh he gets to Kamara. How many times? Now, how many times? And so on and so forth. Uh, are the body parts, uh, 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 I'm sorry. How many times the, uh, the head is washed? Moving on to the next portion. How many times the head of what? The head is washed and what uh, constitutes of the washing of the head and so on and so forth. We have an indication because the Imam, Rahmatullah alayhi, this is the give, yani just, uh, a preview. Right? And a, and a, what do you say? Like a, a sneak peek, right? Because the Imam, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he says, وَمَسْهُ جَمِيعِ الرَّأْسِ And wiping all of the head. But inshallah Ta'ala will um, cover that inside of the next uh, class. And I apologize for uh, the length. But I really wanted to finish um, what we was able to, to cover. And again, I apologize uh, for the length. فَنَتَوَقَّفُنَا uh, نتوقف هنا ونكتفي بهذا القدر بهذا القدر والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وجزاكم الله خيرا